Welcome to this episode. Today we are talking about basic feature scaling. In this series we have already seen how to train a basic regression model and we have also discussed why we would split data. In the future when we deal with real world data sets we will come across a lot of different features with different scales. For instance we could come across a feature like this one here. By the way I took this feature from a data set that is available on the UCI machine learning repository. It is the classical auto MPG dataset, which is very suitable for regression techniques, since it's about the city cycle fuel consumption in miles per gallon that can be predicted based on the features that were also given in this dataset. For example, these are the features here. And one of these features is this one, the weight feature of the vehicle. And the UCI Ivan machine learning repository is actually very useful since you have a lot of data sets in here. Check it out. It's definitely worth to have a look there. As you can see, the weight feature goes from zero to, to over 5,000. Now imagine you have a model like the following. Our model would be a simple linear regression model where each feature value is multiplied with the respective weight plus we got also a bias. Now imagine x1 is our weight feature and x2 and x3 are other features that have values in between 0 and 1. Do you see the problem here? Well, let's plug in some random values and see where the problem could be. As you can see, the value of y hat is predominantly determined by the weight feature. So the second and third term become supp suppressed by the fact that the values will be always a few magnitudes smaller than the weight feature values. And we don't want the situation to happen because our model prediction will be used in the computation of the gradients. When our gradients are not sensitive to any features except one or a few, then we got a problem. Possible problems could be the following. Our model is converging far slower. The optimal solution cannot be reached at all since the large feature value will make the gradients too big and the learning rate is not able to adapt to, the, to these large values effectively. Our model would not, will not produce any useful predictions since other features are effectively reduced to one feature or the larger features. So what can we do? Well, we can do feature scaling. In this episode, I want to show you the two most common feature scaling techniques which you encounter in machine learning. The first feature scaling technique is the min-max normalization. This scaling technique is useful if we want to choose the range of our scaled value x hat. So for instance, when we want to scale a feature to the interval of 0 to 1, we can do this with this technique. In this case, high would be equal to 0, low equal to 1, and max and min are the maximum and minimum values of our feature. Typical ranges are e either between minus 1 or 1, or 0 and 1. A disadvantage of this technique is that this scaling is sensitive to outliers. Why is that? Well, we use the minimum and maximum values of our feature for the computation of the transformation rate. The formula of a min-max normalization, also known as interval scaling or range normalization, can be simplified when we want to scale our feature values to the interval 0 to 1. So very simple. Let's do a quick example in order to understand how to transform a feature with a min-max normalization into the interval 0 to 1. So we got our feature, the weight and a few values. First of all, we identify the min and max. Then we just have to plug in the values into our formula and get our transformed values. As you can see, the minimum values gets the value 0 and the maximum value gets the value 1 and the values in between get values in between of 0 and 1. If we apply this normalization technique to the weight feature, that we have seen in the beginning, we get the following distribution. As you can see, all the values range between 0 and 1, and the shape of the distribution is very similar. Sometimes we wish to undo a transformation in order to get the original values, and we can do this in the following way. Well, this is the formula for reverting the min-max normalization. You just have to switch low and high with min and max. Elegant, right? Another feature scaling technique is the standardization. That is, we compute the z-score for our feature values. Standardization is pretty popular since it makes it possible to compare different random variables with each other. The computation is also not too hard, we just have to determine the mean and the sample standard deviation. Let's do an example. We got our weight feature again and some values. Computing the mean is quite simple. We just have to add the weight values and divide them by the number of values that we got. This will give us 
2996. It is a little bit more difficult to compute the sample standard deviation, which is the square root of sample variance. But there's a trick to remember the formula of a sample variance. The variance is measuring the average deviation of the individual values from the mean value. Since we don't want a negative variance value, we have to square the deviations. We have to divide by n minus 1 instead of n, as we would do when we take the average. Because we don't have the whole population of data, we have only a sample. And so we lose one degree of freedom since we have already used our sample data in order to compute the mean. The standard deviation will, then, will be then 959.76 rounded up to two digits. Now simply apply our formula of a z-value and you get the following values. If you want to interpret the values that you get, you have to know that the z-score measures, it measures how many standard deviations a feature value is lying away from the mean value. Apply to on our weight feature, we get the following distribution. One thing that you can remember is that if your feature is following a normal distribution, then the z-score will also follow a normal distribution. Otherwise, we can observe some distortions in the distribution. For our use case of training models on data, it doesn't matter. We use those scaling techniques in order to make our model training more stable by having feature values that, that are comparable in size. Reverting this transformation is as simple as applying this formula. You just have to uh, solve the z-score equation after x, and that's it. Thank you very much for joining. If you found this video insightful, please like and subscribe, and I see you in the next one.